Hey, True Believers England team here with another one of the Christmas comic reviews. I'm, I'm actually trying to do one a day, but I've missed a couple. I, I Even though they haven't been getting the views that I would prefer, these are quite fun, and I like the Grim Fairy Tales holiday specials. I've done one before, and this is 2020, so I'll get to the past ones as well. But this is an anthology, so I'm going to give you a little heads up that... Uh, these are going to be uneven, you know, some of the stories are good, some of the stories are bad, some of them are all right, all right. As far as the cover, I'm reading these and reviewing them as I go, so I have no idea if this has anything to do with it. It's just a really cool cover, though. All right, and one thing also is Thread by uh, Dave Franchini here or whatever is actually a one page, or at least it goes throughout the stories, I guess. And it's just talking about the balance of life and death. You know, some people get a long life, some people get a, a short life, and then they break into the actual series. So there's not much to this. It's okay. It's not written poorly. It's just, it's all set up and it's all uh, gravy and no meat basically to this one. And then it just, of course, leads into the next story. The first story is called Nice or Nice or something like that, and it is from uh, it's from Kevin Townsley and Marcello Basil, and it deals with a chief of police who is sad because his wife has recently died. It's Christmas time, and he is determined to keep up all of the traditions. And there's some suspicious things going on. We just saw he had a bag full of weapons and money. So I don't know how up and up he is. Is he a good kid, guy? Is he a bad guy? Um, and it just basically shows him going through the house. He does his advent calendar. He puts up his lights and he really wants to give his dead wife, I guess, her spirit. He's still in contact, you know, by, by meaning he finds himself talking to uh, her even though she's not there, you know, I, I get this, you know, loss, you, you'll just kind of go, you know, and blah, 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 this is what happened, because you're used to having someone there to talk to, and uh, he does up his house, and he's very proud of it, he actually says, time to make the electric bill more than the mortgage payment, he says, but when he goes back downstairs the very next day, it is trashed and there's cats everywhere and he's wondering what's going on. When he goes to work, he actually asks, are we getting um, any kind of complaints about vandals and maybe some lost pets? But they say no. So the next day, uh, it happens again and he looks on his security tape and it's him. He's doing it. He's peeing on things and he's breaking stuff up. And he's uh, apparently uh, seen something, though, that we're not shown. And so he arms himself, locks himself in. And uh, when he falls asleep, the elves attack, tie him up, and basically take care of him to the point of when somebody does come to help, they're murdered as well. And that is how the story ends, my friends. Which is kind of, it's kind of sad to me because... It was going so well up until then. It was really, okay, wait a second. Are we going to have a guy who's gone crazy because of the death of his wife? Is he going to go all Silent Night, Bloody Night on us or something like that? But it just seems to end very abruptly. All right, let's head to chapter two. The third story is, well, okay, so we meet this guy. He's a business dude, um, and, and literally his office says business dude. It even has a bust of a uh, a Greek something or other. <laughs> it's like, okay, why? Why is that in there? So uh, he's talking to a friend, a douchey friend, and they mentioned how hot his secretary is. His wife calls, and immediately he's just yelling and screaming. Uh, I, I, yeah, that's how they're setting it up. You know, he's he's going off. He's like, all this guy is is mad, by the way. However, I have to point something out. They point out that this guy is interested in in going with this other woman. He's interested. He looks around and that kind of thing, but he never actually does it. I mean, it, it, something is obviously stressing this guy out because he's snapping at everybody. And you're supposed to be feeling really, you know, that this guy's a douche and he deserves whatever's coming to him. But he never acts on it. They never actually show him acting on anything. This is as far as it goes. And when his wife calls and says, it's time to come home, guess what he does? He tells the secretary, it's time to go home. 
Uh, so in the end, when he's saying, oh, can't a guy have a drink with a, a co-worker, that's what it ended up being. Now, is that lascivious? In a way, it is, yes, because he didn't tell his wife about it. But in the end, he did the right thing. Yes, he's mad. Yes, he's yelling. Yes, something's going on. He, ne- he raises his hand, but he never actually hits. And uh, that's something. I, I, I noticed that. They never actually show this guy going any, anywhere near evil. So they, uh, it's Christmas Eve. They hear a noise. And the husband goes out and checks because that's what a husband does to protect his family. And while he's out there, one of Santa's elves steals him. And the parent, mother's like, yep, yep, daddy's gone now because he was me- mean all the time. Let's go open presents. That's kind of a warped little story there at, that really, I don't know if death warranted what we saw. Yeah, granted, the guy was a douchebag. The guy was an asshat. But disappearance and death and nonchalant, uh, the, the nonchalant reaction from the family, I don't think he deserved all of that. And the book ends on another page of pontification as we find there's a guy who's sleeping gently while he's done all sorts of horrors. And then we see that, in fact, there is the uh, character on the cover bringing a lot of monsters to make sure that he suffers for the penalties that we hadn't seen. We just hadn't seen it. And that's actually the big problem with the book here, gang. Uh, It's a snuff book, really. Um, we're not seeing a, a lot of times the reason why these work is we get to see the person be evil and there's some sort of comeuppance or maybe there's a, uh, there's a turnaround or redemption for the character. And there's just none of that here. And I think that's, that's a big problem with the book. It, it, they, they need that kind of story arc for any of these to have any kind of emotional impact. The couple with a kitten bought a kitten. And then got killed for it. And there was no uh, buildup. There was, I mean, right away, it's like, yeah, it's obvious the kitten's a monster. Obviously, the kitten's a monster. I mean, I, I did a movie review over at Extreme Movie Show for a, a movie called Good Boy. Same thing. Brought home a cute dog. It was a monster. So, yeah. Uh, how was the book? It was all right. It was all right. <laughs> I've, I've read better. I've read worse. It was all right. But it, it seriously, they need to work on... Uh, why these things are happening so we actually feel the impact of the story that we should be feeling. Okay, just to fill this uh, video out, I decided let's do a review of the Archie Christmas Spectacular. A lot of times I don't touch Archie's as far as the reviews go because, I don't know, they're kind of the same, aren't they? You know, they tell a silly joke, it's all set up around this uh, lighthearted premise. In this case, the kids are going around trying to find a Christmas tree, they can't find them. They've been bought up, but they go to HM Bug. Get it? HM Bug? Humbug? And uh, they find out that the guy there has had a bad Christmas experience. Therefore, he's buying up all the Christmas trees in town to turn them into pick, uh, toothpicks so nobody else could enjoy a Christmas. Okay, so they find out what toy Santa didn't bring him, and they buy him the toy, and all of a sudden he has a huge change of heart. And that's the that's the opening story. Uh, and, and it goes on, you know, it's just one of those things. Uh, Archie decides he's going to film a video with his dad and dress him like Santa Claus and make him look fat. And the guy uh, and everybody's like, hey, you don't need to add padding to make your dad look fat. And the, uh, to the point where the dad gets tired of all the fat jokes and says, I could fit down the chimney where, of course, he gets stuck. You know, it's that kind of humor. And that's that's Archie. And I love it. I've, I've loved Archie since I was a kid. Uh, but if you're not into that kind of, and I'm going to admit it here, childish uh, humor, then this isn't going to be the kind of book for you. But in all honesty, there is a little bit of, I don't know, there's a nostalgic feeling to an Archie comic like this. This isn't the everybody looks like modern day teenagers, let's go melodramatic CW bullcrap kind of to Archie. This is, we're just going to sit back, relax, we're going to have a lot of fun With the whole uh, Christmas season, we're going to tell a lot of jokes surrounded by a lot of situations that people find themselves in. You know, like shoving your father up a chimney or going to an incredibly huge business to save the Christmas trees. You know, the kind of thing you get into every holiday. Either way, look, I enjoyed it. I understand it's Archie. Not everybody's going to because this is some simple shit right here. But at least it is a lot of fun. 
So that's my opinion. What is yours? Let us know in the comments below. Please comment, comment, comment. Don't forget to click like, share, subscribe, ring that notification bell if you haven't done it already. And uh, if you don't mind helping out the channel, go on over to Patreon or to Ko-Fi, drop a dollar in the till. This is the way we're trying to make a living, so it uh, helps keep the lights on, helps keep making videos for you. I'd like to thank everybody who's already done that, and to everyone, all of the true believers, thank you very, very much for watching.